Oh my god, my AA. My beautiful AA. What the heck? The plane just crashes and dive bombs everything? Oh my god, everything was hit. Hello everyone, this is Grayshot17 and I am doing something unique in Company of Heroes 3 Pre-Alpha. No, I'm not messing with the game in any capacity other than playing it to the best of my ability and showing you how you can play through the entire Pre-Alpha campaign without ever going into an RTS mode. That is right, and I am not joking whatsoever, you can do exactly that. And uh, yeah, I actually found this out accidentally. I was just kind of messing around and found out a way through it. Which, again, kind of cool that you can play the game this way, so adds to a little bit of variety. But we'll jump right in and show you how you can do it. Again, no modifications, no hacks, or anything like that. Just playing the game, and you can play it, like I said, all in turn-based. Let's get to it. Alright, we're starting off fresh. Again, this is a brand new campaign, so this is not using a previous load or any other thing like that. Uh, again, we have a city currently being bombed, but Come on, there's a way around it. Under attack. German planes are using Pomigliano airfield to launch bombing runs over the port. We must capture that airfield. But not immediately. Ignore the commander. We don't do that immediately. Now, to do this, you can do it any way. I prefer the British, just because of what I'm going to do. And also, make sure you have the tutorial off so it doesn't force you to attack the airfield. So, of course, we have our units. Our objective is to capture that airfield, right? That's what we're supposed to do. Don't do it. Uh, right now... You have, uh, of course, your two companies, and each company can house two detachments. Um, now, person, and this is very important later on, I prefer having an engineer and a medic detachment with each of them. Uh, that's just me. So, right now, I'm going to purchase some units. I'm going to get a rifleman detachment because I just like having them. I think they're pretty good support um, and also used for another thing. But for right now, we're going to throw in an engineer detachment, right? And we're going to go and get a medic squad. Or detachment, sorry. I'm going to throw in the detachment over here. So I'm going to head left with this first unit. You'll understand why. Uh, essentially, the first part is if you have a sapper or engineer in your unit, essentially you can detect enemy mines. So again, that way they don't detonate. So I can deal with this enemy force. There we go. The detachment is neutralized. And remember... If you fight a detachment, it doesn't jump you into an RTS battle. Ah, oh, so close. So very, very close. All right, so now we could go deal with that. I'm not going to. Well, instead, we're going to do is we're going to get the medic squad, throw them in on in there, right? And we're going to charge this company around the corner. All right. And upon that, I'm going to move the ships out of the way. So essentially, these ships don't get hit by any additional uh, bombing strikes. Uh, don't get them too close to Naples, uh, of course, because again, any sort of bombing strike can take out one of your units. Now you could be in a situation where, oh, great shot, Naples under fire. It's eventually going to go down in health, and once your health gets down to thirty percent, or I think it's right around thirty percent, you can't build any more units in that area until it's repaired. So essentially, you could be in a situation where, theoretically, a port is destroyed, you have no additional supplies coming in, and you have to hold out with what you have, theoretically. Uh, but in this situation, uh, we have another way around. So, first up, I'm gonna going to <laughs> tell this mech squad to go run around and get back with that company. I'm also going to... Oh, uh, that, that's the other thing. In turn-based mode, you have to go one at a time. Again, pre-alpha, they're still working on it. And they're probably just, again, just hopefully they work that out. That's my biggest thing, I would say, is making sure that you can do multiple actions in a given turn. Um, maybe an attack action, at the very least, would be one at a time. But it, but in my opinion, I think it would be preferable if a action of... Uh, what is it called? Um, any action that's just movement, you can do multiple times. And we're going to circumvent the MG and just go around it. Oh, wait, we're suppressed. We can't do that. But uh, I believe he already fired his shot. So because there's already an action, my mortar team can open fire and uh, neutralize his detachment. I'm going to throw in this uh, Churchill, the engineer squad. And we're just going to carry on and push for the town. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Pompeii is ours. 
Now, again, uh, most likely you're going to see enemy detachments while moving through. If if you see this, that means they're uh, disorganized, right? That they're having issues. And, uh, yeah, they're going to be out of supply. So they're going to need to get back to their own territory. Um, now, it does take them a little bit of time to get through supply, but they will try and attempt to get back. Otherwise, once they run out of supply, they'll be unable to move. Um, I do think the amount of supply units have is maybe a little bit higher than they should, but right now, again, if they're testing it, uh, the idea of a unit being out of supply, being like, oh shoot, what do we do? And then trying to make its way back. Okay. Okay, I can see it. All right. Anyway, let's get to the next turn. All right. Yep. There it goes. He's going to head back into his supplies so that way he can fight another day. Um, either that or he sees a, a see, he could see us moving to the airfield and wants to stop us. Oh my god. All right. You, I hope you guys saw that boat. He's, you know, trying to do some tricks for us. All right. Meanwhile, again, we got additional supplies. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to purchase another company. On co Au contraire, I'm going to purchase a ton of sappers. So I'm going to purchase four sappers. Right? There we go. We'll purchase four of them. And I'm going to try to keep this alive. Now, next up, we're going to throw these guys inside, right? And we're going to push to that position, um, hopefully. There we go. Now I can quickly take the main road. Again, if there's any mines, like... Right there. We can just ignore it. Capture the point. Again, a capture and or an attack is the same action. So, unfortunately, you're going to be in a situation where you can attack something, but you can't capture. Or if you capture something, they could you can't attack them. But you can still technically dig in or something along those lines if you really wanted to. I'm going to ignore that mine for the meantime and push toward that point and just hang out right there. Now, we do have 200 munitions. So, I know, by the way, this is a destroyer squadron. But as you can tell, the ship kind of makes it look like a battleship. And I'm assuming that's what it kind of is. Anyway, the naval bombardment is going to hit the airfield. And this is where we kind of start highlighting why I'm doing this. There's a garrison there and there's aircraft, right? So I'm going to hit the airfield. Now it's already damaged. And we're going to see how much damage it actually does, right? Not a ton, uh, but enough. It, it does enough. Now, as I said, a detachment doesn't initiate a battle. Right? In terms of, like, jumping into an RDS mode. But, a detachment can attack an airfield. And as you can see, we can currently uh, heal up and make sure Naples really doesn't take all that much damage at all. In fact, it looks pretty good. I mean, you know, for a city that's currently being bombed by the Germans, it, it, it looks respectable. For the most part. We're gonna advance now. Now, once you get to this sector, it should eventually cause the uh, bridges to explode. And the most positive way I could say. Oh, I okay. And also you get sometimes like this where pathfinding will just cause an issue. Luckily, your other units can just, like I said, jump out, grab resources, right? And immediately jump back in. Also, I wonder if I can initiate that exploding. That would be very helpful if I could. Let's see if I can do that real quick. I'm going to try to get close and... Wait, does it not explode? Oh, hell there no. it goes. So anyway, uh, it's by default, these bridges will explode over here, here, and I believe over in this sector too. So making the only bridge, weirdly enough, that one, which it's like, yeah, we blew up the bridges. We blew up all of them. It's like, what about this one? Forget about that one. Who cares? Anyway, so uh, ad anyway, additionally, uh, that means they can't attack you. So the companies over on that side of the river can't move in and start harassing you, meaning you can kind of clear out what's in this sector, which helps when you try and take territory. Now, why am I going into all this? Well, it's kind of important that you don't really get pushed by the enemy uh, until you take Avaleno. So I'm going to go and take Avaleno before I take anything else. A T-gun right there. We're just going to ignore it, take the position, and keep moving forward. The depot, Commander. Now, unfortunately, because of the naval bombardment we did last turn, the ships cannot fire another salvo for two turns, so we can't deal with that directly. I just love the idea of the Germans bombing the port, and then uh, slowly but surely, all the engineers come out to, at night to repair all the buildings. The, the Luftwaffe flies back over, and they're like, wait, we just bombed that building. How's it back up? It's like, American engineers. They do a lot very quick. Uh, unfortunately, 
there goes that detachment. And again, my goal is to take a Valendo. That's what I need to do. And now you'd be asking yourself, Grayshaw, wh why are you taking this location? Well, it's quite simple. Oh, nope, can't get to it, so we'll do it next turn. But you take Avaleno because essentially what you're trying to accomplish, and we'll just move up and attack these mortar attachments one by one. The reason you're trying to take it is because you're trying to make it easier for you. Um, essentially, once you attack this airfield, a company will spawn in that other location. Um, beyond that, uh, if you take it before that happens, it's a, your company can just take the point because there's no company there. And right now, I'm not pushing here because there's a company right here, which would initiate an RTS battle. So, in order to not have that happen, I am just taking out the people around it and then moving my rifle detachments up to then attack the airfield. Because riflemen have a nice ability where they can take positions and targets. If we can watch, they'll shoot, they'll do a little bit of damage, and then the company will counterattack. Although it's not really shown, um... Oh, wait, they actually didn't do as much as I thought. Okay, never mind. Uh, the last time I've done this, the company absolutely annihilated my detachment, which is why I didn't do it. Um, all right, let's move up with the mortar, maybe. We can neutralize the point. Also, again, the bombers will hurt the aircraft. So far, the infantry really just focuses on the garrison. So anyway, that unit uh, is dead, which again allows us to take the point. And then we'll just quick, we know it's not going to be until next turn until we take it, so we're going to repair everything. Now, if you're wondering why I picked the British instead of the uh, combined arms or the American plan, it's because of the ships. Uh, the artillery batteries that you can use is extremely helpful for dealing with enemy combatants and groups. A little damage, not, not all that much. You know, nothing that a good old fashioned American slash British sappers team can't fix. I think they're all British, actually. Have I said, uh, has America been taking credit for what Britain's been doing? Yeah, that sounds about right. Anyway, like I said, if you ignore the unit, they will get back to their supply eventually because they want to get supplied in order to continue the battle. Um, now, I believe riflemen will push in and also take positions, so you want to watch out for that. Um, I've seen them get close. I've tried to kill them before that happens. But, like, again, riflemen can just take the point. A fine plan. Well executed, Commander. The airfield is under allied control. All right. I may have messed this up. There we go. We got Avalino. Never mind. We're good. With the troops. Woo! I will say, if you're trying to look for help, when they go do that slow cutscene over the entire terrain, it does shoot every unit that's hidden or around. So you kind of get a base idea of what you're fighting. But yeah, uh, so anyway, Avaleno is now ours, and also the airfield is now ours. So essentially, now you just need to capture every other point. Uh, most points are just normal capture. It's not really that much of an issue. Um, of course, you have situations like this where you have to deal with, like, enemy uh, anti-aircraft or entrenched positions, MGs, their AT guns hidden in trees, etc. Those can be quite annoying. But, like, a, um, a quick way to deal with them is airstrikes, artillery strikes, or surrounding them. So there's, I believe, a unit right... Oh, maybe it moved. Okay, there usually is a unit somewhere hidden here that will attack your men. Um, so it's best to be cautious. Also, mines. There's plenty of mines in this sector. You want to be extra cautious when you're moving around. All right, now I'm going to purchase two uh, companies. We'll purchase one of each. Or not. I guess we'll just purchase two Indian groups. Works for me. Anyway, uh, AT gun suppressed, and we're advancing. And again, um, as long as you keep taking territory and keep advancing, you'll be good. And again, the artillery uh, can hit a lot of these sectors, help clear a lot of things. Bombers as well can help you remove enemy detachments from any single place there are. And if you do stumble by a detachment, just retreat. Or, sorry, a company. Just You can retreat and then call in the air support, call in everything else to help keep pushing you forward. Yeah, just take note, your detachments probably won't last long by themselves if they're not supported. So, you know, kind of makes sense as this detachment's incredibly small compared to a company. Oh, and that means it's also cut off, so bases can be cut off. Similar to Alco 2, you could cut off enemy positions and make sure the resources don't go back to the, the base of the enemy. 
that's what that is. Essentially, that position is cut off, so you don't have to worry about it. But anyway, with that unit gone, we can just continue our advance. All right, so now we're going to go straight into the next city. Again, the fastest way to move into units is highways. Highways are so, so much faster. That being said, you can always have pathfinding issues or deal with enemy units. But hold on. Am I able? Nope, I'm out of range. Although, just in case there's any more Germans around that corner. By the way, the max range of these things is like 25 miles. So essentially, these... Things, or I, I know they're classified as destroyers, their battleships are firing the same distance of a, as a Yamato. As, essentially, America borrowed some Yamatos. Alright, we're pushing them across. I think we should wipe the mortar. Yep, there it goes. And we'll just push right into town. Alright. And again, they look like pack guns. They're anti aircraft batteries. It would be neat if eventually, uh, well, actually, no, it would be around this time. The Germans. Uh, Flak 88 could be used as, uh, as they could be set to anti-tank, or you could set them to anti-air, or something along those lines. Because, again, it did make sense. I mean, the Germans learned pretty quick, hey, man, this gun's really good at puncturing that really thick armor of, the, like, really any tank they throw at us. Maybe we should use this. Again, those are the attack planes I was talking about earlier about building anti-aircraft guns to damage them. Possibly uh, keep them at their base a little bit longer, or just protect your units. Um, again, they do what they can, and they are quite annoying. But they're not too bad, uh, so long as you stay away from that bank. That's where they have a tendency to just fly around and make sure they con conjugate at. Once you go to more of the other side of the map... You can kind of circumvent that airfield. But again, Intel eventually you'll get close. The opportunity to intercept a German officer. Take him out. Okay, so this is also a really good example. So, of course, this German officer is essentially in its own, like, mini Sir, company. Sir, I'm getting an urgent distress call from oh. the Partisan Resistance in Avellino. They're pinned under heavy fire and request our support. Uh, Commander, their intel network is too valuable to let this cell collapse. That is a fair point. That's why we already have the position. So that way, when we rescue the Partisans, they're already rescued. Securing Avellino has reassured the Partisans of our alliance. They're offering us the use of their operatives based in the town from now on. So long as we hold Avellino, of course. Yep. So again, now you get the Partisans, you can loot supplies. I prefer the munitions, just because again, you can get additional uh, air, artillery strikes, airstrikes, etc. Um, and once we get additional supplies, we'll upgrade that airfield with some bombers. But at the very least, I do want to highlight... Hold on. Let me grab that. There we go. Pop out the engineer squad. Walk outside. Take some fresh air. from being cooped up inside that tank. Let's uh, grab those supplies. Even if I have to use an extra turn. Or is this still on? Is that why? Sometimes units can be on top of each other, which is, can be a bit annoying. But... You just move them out of the way, and they'll be able to pick up those uh, much-needed supplies that you need so much. And again, I moved it, the screen, by the way, with all, and then double tap the backspace to put it back. If you've played Co, you kind of know how to move the screen. It does help. It is nice that you can kind of move it to whoever you want. I, I do want to also point out, so, okay, so let's discuss the, uh, the these, uh, like, side missions, essentially. You'll find random companies or officers, stuff like that, that you need to neutralize. Um, so long as it's like this, if you attack it with a company, it's going to be a position where that unit will, uh, how do I put this nicely, uh, that unit will either annihilate a detachment and or it will engage your company and you'll jump into an RTS mission. But, there, again, there's a way to circumvent it. Uh, you have the Indian artillery that can be called in, air support, which I have, oh, oh there's, the, there's the airfield, uh, that I've yet to get because we are currently don't have manpower, among other things. So there, there are some ways to navigate that environment so you can engage these guys, uh, kill them without, of course, uh, fighting them directly just indirectly, you know the best way and by the way I could upgrade these guys, you know with different abilities and all, all sorts of cool stuff But um, here's the thing like I said, we're not gonna be engaging right? We're not gonna be in the RTS mode So we don't really need to upgrade these guys and uh, put in their skills since that is not necessary Have an MG, the Indian Artillery uh, Company will clear the way for you. 
I, I, tr I truly love the artillery ability on this thing. It's great. All right, anyway, let's move on over so that way we are set to attack that um, officer. Again, I do like, and I, and I believe this is the reason why, because of all the anti-air over there, the planes are like, um, okay, well, this is bad. Uh, go attack the other region, because otherwise we're going to be shot down over there. And they just bombed my detachment. Yeah, so anyone says the Air Force is not great, no, it can absolutely start wrecking your guys. Okay, so just for reference, um, so for example, again, Monte Casino, you're always going to have to attack it. There's, in this pre-alpha, there's always going to be a recon plane that goes down. Though where it goes down is, I, at least to me, it differs between this and a couple other locations. And the same thing can be said about the officer in like General Taub and fight. So I do like even in this pre-alpha, they do show that there may be some things popping up, but they do change. And, and because of their position and the companies that already surround that location, uh, it does change like how you play and how you actually deal with that threat. Uh, for example, I now have to deal with that guy. So I'm just going to do the good old-fashioned artillery and slowly weaken him down. Jackpot, Commander. We've located an airfield in the north within range of Monte Casino. We take that airfield, we'll have the upper hand. I Did he think the planes were just launching from the mountain? Like, yeah, they have an airfield. Look sharp, Gunners. He's like, hmm, these planes are coming from somewhere. It's like, yeah, I, I thought we knew where they were. Again, he, luckily, the artillery building deals with stuff entrenched. And we can use the artillery on the ship to hit the airfield and the infantry that are just, you know, running away on the road. You know, no retreats. And that hurts the company and the two planes that are currently in the base. So, all works out for me. Oh my god, my AA. My beautiful AA. What the heck? The plane just crashes and dive bombs everything. Oh my god, everything was hit. Now, in case you're wondering, like, oh, great shot. If you go for the intel, will it initiate? No, uh, the intel's just a pickup. So, honestly, I'll just deal with that unit on it, but other than that, we still got it by going next to it. Sir, and there's Tau. Observations from the recon plane show the exact location oh no, there's Tau! In the meantime, we got all the munitions, so we're good in that way, which means continued strategic bombing! I find it funny these guys keep saying, you know, tank killing is our specialty when, you know, they're an artillery unit. But, you know, I give them credit. Oh my god, really? Really? Uh, no, you didn't. He's still alive and that's a person, not a tank. Ah, there he goes. with Even with the T-pose. Bomber flies back, and uh, yeah, there's enough blood there that literally it's covering multiple trees, so I think we got him. Now, I will say that, but unfortunately we did not. This is the one thing I do want to point out. Uh, with that officer, you could bomb him, but it doesn't count. He's still there. So whatever reason, it if you neutralize him with the Air Force, it doesn't say that he's gone. For whatever reason. I guess the idea is maybe he, you know, you took out the company or he was with, but he himself could have escaped in the bombing campaign. You're not entirely sure. Uh, whatever the case may be, uh, it's going to pop up saying that, uh, well, <laughs> that, uh, you know, he survived. So just take that under consideration. All right. I'm going to deal with this if annoying infantry unit real quick. He is still alive. Well, you know what he can do? Oh, okay, they both attacked. And he did. Oh, he died. He's dead. Okay. 
We can use the mech squad. That's why I like having at least one guy with a medic out of like two companies to quickly heal. Because one, it's free. And two, it actually heals quite a bit. As you can see, it's going to pop up to about here, I believe. Yep, there it goes. So absolutely worth it to have mech squad help with your fronts. So that way your guys can stay alive. Damn, the officer got away. Opportunities like that don't come up often. Again, I don't think he got away. Uh, again, unless he smeared someone else's blood on the ground. But, you know, that's... Pretty unlikely. Not impossible, but maybe unlikely. All right, so we're gonna bomb the airfield to take the airfield and then use the engineers we brought up. So we'll move up and grab the position. Airfield captured, Commander. We got all kinds of aerial options for Monte Casino now. We are gonna rain hell fire on the winter line. Word of caution, Commander. The Monte Cassino Abbey is a cherished national monument. The fallout from an airstrike could cost us. I mean, yeah, it could. Or we just kind of bomb it without having any negative repercussions. Oh, I will say, so for these uh, destroyers, even though they say, uh, again, they're you know outside of supply range it's just because they're in enemy territory i for these i don't believe you'll ever lose supply on them or you at the very least you shouldn't um anyway you still got Taub over here you have to contend with so you could always bomb them i mean not a terrible idea in all honesty Ah, and he's almost gone. Who? What, what was it? The invasion of... Was it Piermo or... Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm thinking... I'm forgetting the uh, the American beach and British beach that literally armor started rolling down so the artillery guns opened fire and, and pushed them back. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> armor on the beaches, boys. Just use your naval guns. And move up everything we got because, uh, oh look, they have a Panzer Force heading straight for the airfield. Uh, and it's not one, but two companies all coming down. Oh boy. Again, if you're wondering why they didn't charge me, I think pathfinding around some of the tank traps might be a little wonky. So I'm going to take this opportunity and run left. Grab the resources and then get back in before you get picked off by the tanks. Um, and then we're just going to head... Uh, right. Alright, and then we'll move him as well. And we'll push right toward the capture point and the munition point. While also there is another armor company. So right now we have four armor companies. And we have one armor company and two, or sorry, three Indian divisions leading the way. And I think we have, oh, nope, he hasn't arrived yet. So yeah, that's all we got. <laughs> oh, it's a great day. All right, a little damage, but I'll take what I can get. Resources are coming on in, and we have additional armor that we can throw in here. Um, note, I will say as well, because we've taken the highways and repaired everything, it does take only like three turns for them to go straight down and get additional supplies. So I do like it how it it it, it seems like the game is designed in a way so that your guys can reinforce pretty quickly uh, in terms of coming up to the front. Um, now let's move here and take this point. There we go, we got those supplies, and we're gonna... All right, well, we'll do that once we bomb the uh, quote-unquote shit out of the two German uh, companies that are in our way. Okay, so we're in a pretty good state right there. Now, I do wanna bring up another interesting tidbit, so... We could engage this unit, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And you could be saying, great shot, if you engage the Panzer, won't you end up in a battle? Well, we'll see. Nope. If you kill the unit, uh, it won't initiate the battle. So, win-win. Uh, so, we're actually, I should have probably done... Eh, it's fine. I mean, that unit already killed it. But we're going to use another bombing run to deal with the last remaining Panzer. And have the 
other Indian division coming on its flank. Alright, did enter its combat range. For whatever reason, it decided to attack me. It's going to do a little bit of damage. But I'm going to do a lot more to it. There it goes. Alrighty, so we'll just continue to move on up. Again, minesweepers are so nice because we just dodged so many mines. That could have been a real hassle to contend with. Right, we're going to grab those resources. Turns out to be munitions. Pretty helpful right now. And then we are just going to drive there. Let's see if we can do that. that. That company is literally chilling on the hill and we're like, alright, cool, we're going to take this position. Don't mind me. Are, are they literally on the hill? The armor company has driven itself up on the hill and may have a small issue. <laughs> I, I love the idea. It's like, that's the that's a group that had like elephants or some big heavy tank and they had to push it all the way up the hill and eventually they get up there and it's like oh well the enemy's on the bottom of the hill uh okay um we don't want to drive down it we'll just stay up here and survive for the rest of the war <laughs> oh no panzers coming down the hill oh, i'm done oh, i'm dead oh, i'm dead I thought he wouldn't come down! I made a joke in everything! Now, I will say it is weird. Um, the Germans aren't taking that. I wonder if- Sir, just... the longer we wait to catch General Tauber, the more likely we're gonna come up short. You know, if you keep yelling at me, I'm just not gonna do it. How about that? Anyway, I, I should note that it is weird they didn't take it. Maybe the AI won't take it, I, the position. Um... I thought I've seen him take it at least once, but it may just because it may be because of the, the difficulty. I know it's easy, but it I don't know. It seems a little like again based on some missions, it seems a little bit more difficult. So it makes my thought process that maybe it is set to easy, but it's actually more of a moderate or normal difficulty. They just kind of all around they just set it like that until they can find tweak it. But I have no confirmation on that or. That's just complete and utter speculation. Um, just because of the fact you can't change the difficulty at all. Uh, so if I had to guess, maybe the AI is not going for it because of that or something on those lines, but not entirely sure. But whatever there is, it's running toward the, the other city. Flight intel, ground intel, a letter from Hitler himself. What difference does it make? It's time to bomb Casino and you know it. I mean, I'll... Use naval artillery to bomb everything around it. How about that? D -d -d is that fine for you? All right, there there's two units down for you. They're, you know, just absolutely annihilated. And then we'll deal with Tal. Ah, uh, Tal is almost gone. Uh, what's good, you know, strategic bombing? Yeah, that, that'll probably fin finish this situation real quick. Ah, there goes oh, Tauba. Hell yeah! I got you, Tauba, you slippery bastard. May the good lord judge you harshly for your crimes. I mean, if you're part of the Air Force, sure, but I feel like you're on the ground. Otherwise, you would have ordered that airstrike, you know, a while ago. All right, well, uh, we're not going to attack Monte Cassino just yet. I need to get something else. In the meantime, we're going to quickly navigate up this hill or around the hill I should say not up it ah and find another German panzer coming down wonderful all right so this is what I'm talking about about having a small battle uh, but not joining an RTS yet so yes we kind of walked into a panzer four who I mean who doesn't walk into an armor uh, company now and again, but we're going to retreat, take a little health damage in the meantime, and just pull back. Rifle squad awaiting orders. Flight intel, ground intel, a letter from Hitler himself. What difference does it make? It's time to bomb Casino, and you know it. All right, so we're going to try to engage that Panzer. I'm sure the the Indian company will be totally fine with that decision. Soldiers, 
Panzer IV re divided. Panzer uh, Company counterattacks and uh, yeah, we're gonna retreat again. Take a little more damage. That's fine. Again, the difference though is the fact that we can heal the different groups. So as long as we have a mech squad, you can theoretically heal them and just get them back into the fight. Now at full health, let's see how this goes. And there goes the Panzer Company. Now again, I'm assuming in the base game, you won't be able to just simply ignore them and just consistently attack. They'll do stuff to uh, force you out. All right, I should probably point out something about Monte Casino at this point. Uh, so Monte Casino, of course, is a location where it's very difficult because of the fact of the terrain and also the garrison. So if you bomb them with planes, uh, the people start getting mad at you and again, the whole shebang. But apparently, you know, if you do a naval bombardment, uh, the garrisons hurt, but uh, you don't hurt anybody. So win-win. Okay, there we go. Um, I will say this, uh, this is most likely the area they spawn from, so most likely a lot of German forces will start pouring in from this sector. So just keep that in mind while you're trying to hold out. I'm gonna go deal with that random unit that's trying to make a run for it. Uh, meanwhile, let's uh, do what you know, anyone should do, and uh, instead of, of course, uh, attacking with bombers, let's use naval artillery, which once again is about 25 miles. So, you know, that's like the range of a Yamato. Now, it doesn't do all that much damage. Yes, slowly but surely. But you know what can help? Mass producing riflemen. That's right. So we are going to literally send a bunch of rifle detachments uh, to go deal with that and attack it directly. As they will at least do damage to it and possibly can weaken down the, uh, the garrison. And then we just finish off Monte Casino with a few more pieces of artillery. Now again, like I said, I am being a little more uh, humane as I am attacking it with, of course, a uh, naval bombardment instead of, you know, bombing runs. Because the, the people are fine if they come from ships. Very close. He's probably going to live, right? Oh, wow, he actually lived. Okay, let's move you back. Surprisingly enough. Uh, oh, my God. Double time you all the way up. That's the one thing about an airport company. They are on the move. All right, let's finish it off. Our last rifle detachment. Monte Casino is now open. Now, just for, uh, you know, j just for the lulls, I am going to drop a American troop right on it. So we're going to literally drop a, a unit on top of Monte Casino. Again, why did it just pair pair drop Monte Casino? Anyway, and there he goes. Uh, how beautiful! Oh my God, that is perfect. And Monte Casino has been captured. Huzzah! Uh, and you know what's perfect? Literally having the, the guy with the American flag on top. That is absolutely perfect. Alright, so that's it. That's gonna be it for Company of Heroes 3 Pre-Alpha. Turn-based mode only. Uh, that took me, by the way, about an hour and a half if I discount any, uh, discount the one crash I had. But yeah, that's essentially how you play it. Um, honestly, I enjoyed it. I thought it was quite fun in order to do it. I know some people aren't a fan of the turn-based mode. For whatever reason, I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, 
again, I just find it entertaining. And again, being a pre-alpha, they're most likely going to be updating and adding more stuff to it in the future. So cannot wait for that. But hey, leave your thoughts. Can you believe it? And uh, yeah, expect another thing possibly coming out on Wednesday, possibly with some other little stuff that kind of goes inside with this. And of course, my thoughts on Company of Heroes 3 Pre-Alpha, but I want to spend more time in playing it to get to know more of the details, the bugs, issues like that. Plus also the positives, the, the things I really, really do enjoy. So check all that out in the near future. But anyway, this has been Great on 7 I'll see all of you next time. Hey guys, before you go, let me give a special shout out to Afria, Folkford, Joey G240, Balam, Ace, Tony B, Ion, Little Koosh, Samuel McKinney, Seth Coopers, and Jacob Oswai. Thank you guys so much for your awesome support and generosity. If you guys want additional content, check out the links above. Otherwise, I'll see all of you next time.